Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and help me sing. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Oh, God is great in here. It's greatly to be praised. Come on and say great. Hallelujah, he's opened doors for me that no man could. Great are you, Lord. Say great. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah, he's made so many ways for me and I thank him. Come on and say how great he is. Great. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Last time, come on and say. We thank Jesus. Come on and put those hands together. Come on and praise the Lord right there. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. I don't have to say anything else, but great is the Lord. The Lord is the great. He is the greatest power. Hallelujah. He has been good. He has been good and we thank him for it. Hallelujah. I'm grateful. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He has been good through it all. Through it all. Through it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Through it all. He has been good. Amen. Hallelujah. And we sing unto the King of kings and the Lord of lords today. And we say, great Jehovah, you are good. And we'll never stop praising his name. I know I'll never stop. How about you? Will you ever stop praising the name of Jesus? No, thank you. No, I will never stop praising the name of Jesus. So come on and put those hands together.
Things might come our way. Sickness might come our way. Troubles with finances might come our way. But I am not going to stop praising him. I am never going to stop praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We won't stop praising you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has been good. He has been good. Come on and put your hands together. The Lord has been good. Oh, come on. Let's put some praise in the atmosphere right now. Let's take a break from the praise and worship and let's put some praise in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've been good, God. You've been mighty, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. When you put praise in the atmosphere, there's a shift that happens. When you put praise in the atmosphere, there's a shift. We want to shift. We want to be closer to you, Jesus. We want to be closer to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He has been a good God. Oh, and we give him all the praise and all the honor. Hallelujah.
people know the Lord has been good and the Lord has been kind and he's blown my mind and for that I give him praise come on we come out to lift up the name of Jesus and to give him glory to give him honor and to give him praise As they break it down, here's what we got to do. I believe anytime there's a declaration, there's got to be a dance. And we've already declared that he's been good, he's been kind, he's blown our minds. We declared that we're going to praise his name. Did we not make that declaration? So that means we owe him a dance. If we declared it, we've got to dance on it. I said, if we declared it, we've got to dance on it. We seal it with the praise. You've been good. You've been kind. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We give him praise. Look at somebody next to you and just let them know he's been good. He's been kind. And he blows my mind. He blows my mind. He's blowing my mind. He's still doing it. The things that I'm believing for that I did not receive yet, he's still going to blow my mind. Where my faith believe is at. That he's still the God that does exceedingly. I said he's the God that does abundantly. He's still the God. He's still the God. Look at somebody and tell them, he's still the God. Scripture says some trust in horses, others trust in chariots. I will remember the name of the Lord. I said I will. I'll remember his name. His name won't fail me. All right. I'm just believing his word that there's no other name given amongst men that we can call on and be saved. That the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run therein and they are safe. We ought to get excited about the name of Jesus because that's the only name that heals. It's the only name that delivers. And it's the only name that sets free. I said it's the only name that heals, delivers, and sets free. Come on, put your hands together one more time for Jesus. Come on, put your hands together one more time for Jesus. We would like to take this moment to worship, welcome each and every one of you to FOMA's Spring Gathering. FOMA, make some noise! We are grateful to God for each and every one of you that have partnered with us in our worship tonight. We thank God for our overseer, the bishop designate, Daryl Young. Come on, let's celebrate our overseer and leader. Make some noise for our overseer and leader. We thank God for our messenger tonight, Bishop Monique Ross. We celebrate you. Make some noise. We praise God for all of our former pastors, our pastor Randy, our Bishop Posley, 
Our Pastor Brown, Pastor Zachary. We thank God for each and every one of you. Amen. Amen. And as we praise God for all of our leaders, I think it's only befitting to give God praise for the one that redeemed us. I don't know about you, I'm only redeemed because of one man. I love my leaders, but they didn't redeem me. There's one man responsible for my redemption. And his name, I said his name is Jesus. Make some noise for you, a redeemer. I said if he redeemed you, if you ain't been redeemed, it's all right. But if you've been redeemed, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord, let the redeemed of the Lord, which means the redeemed has a sound. Hallelujah. All right, all right. We're going to move on tonight. I'm glad that I'm redeemed. <laughs> I'm glad that I got the benefits of salvation. He has redeemed me from all of my sins. Healed me from all of my diseases. Scripture says he even crowns me with righteousness. Listen, listen, our choir is up. Our choir is up. We're now going to turn it over into the hands of our choir as they lead us further. But I'm not mad at you because the redeemed ought to say so. I said the redeemed ought to say so. The redeemed ought to, be, ought to be excited about where they are. The redeemed ought to be able to look back over their lives and see where the Lord Let the redeemed say so. I said let the redeemed say so.
That's why we've gathered here to worship and to celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, for redeeming us and pulling us out of the hand of the enemy. So let's sing this song. This song is called Stir Up the Gifts. The Lord says that uh, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Somebody say, I got a sound mind. I got a sound mind. When the world is crazy, when all these things are happening out in the world, we got a sound mind because the Lord is in us. So come on, let's sing this song. Stir up the gift choir. Come on, put those hands together.
together for the choir. Hey man, come on, put the hands together for the choir. Say, Lord, stir up the gift. Stir up the gift in me. Amen. How many people are excited to be in the house of the Lord tonight? How many people are expecting a word of God tonight? That's going to touch the very essence of your soul. I'm going to be honest, I love dancing, I love the singing, but the word of God is what keeps us. That's what's going to sustain us. Amen? Amen. So we're going to hasten with our program tonight so we leave our guest enough time to share with us what the Lord has given her. Amen? Amen. So we're preparing our hearts and our minds at this time to participate in our worship and giving. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's get excited about giving. The Bible says the Lord loves what? A cheerful giver. So put some smiles on your face as we prepare to give tonight. Amen? Our finance team is coming at this time. We're asking everyone to stand all over the building. And we are asking for your partnership. If we can get everybody in the building to partner with us and sow a $50 seat. Amen? Partner with us and sow a $50 seat. And we're not intimidated by it. If you don't have it, you don't have it. You sow what you have. Amen? But if you do and you're partnering with us, come on, we're standing all over the building. If you are giving digitally, the QR code is up on the screen. If you're giving through Givelify, it's Faith Outreach Ministry Alliance. If you're giving through Cash App, it's dollar sign, Faith Outreach MA. Amen? Are we partnering tonight? Come on, are we partnering tonight? We don't have to go through hula hoops, tricks, and all that. We just believe that when we give, God's going to return it to us. Can we just believe that tonight? Amen. So we're asking everyone to partner with the $50 seed. All of our former pastors, please connect and let's sow a $50 seed. And we're believing that you and the audience are partnering with us. Let us pray. We also, do, we also have, if you have a card right here on the end, you can give. Swipe your card that way. Amen. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that you allowed us to prosper. And our giving tonight, Father, we are declaring that you are the source of all of our provision. Father, we are exclaiming that God, not resources, is who we serve. And so we give from the right posture in our heart. We give cheerfully tonight, believing that you're going to multiply it. Father, you take little and make it much. So what we give tonight, Father, cause it to be multiplied for the work of the ministry. And we believe it to be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Our musicians are giving us some great music, and we are preparing to give. You are now in the hands of our ushers at this time. Our ushers will lead you in your giving. Everybody facing the walls, facing the windows, and we're coming out from the back. Everybody, please stand and march the house so we don't, have to, we don't have to try to get over anybody. It's all right. Just come touch the basket all over the building. Come on. Can we stand and do this together, starting from the rear?
get the glory. and every one of you for your liberal giving we thank God for you at this time come on put your hands together for yourselves we are grateful that you had something to give amen amen we're moving on at this time we're moving on at this time we're going to follow it this way. We're going to have our Bishop Posley come and have some words of expressions coming from one of our former leaders. Before he comes, let us also acknowledge the great, the great women that undergird these great men. Can you help us celebrate Lady Young? Come on, let's celebrate yet, Lady Young. Amen. Would you help me celebrate Lady Cannon? Help me celebrate Lady Brown. Would you help me celebrate Lady Posley? Amen, and we thank God for LV in her absence. Amen, at this time we're going to have expressions from our Bishop Posley. But don't sit down now, somebody clap your hands and give God some break. Come on, our God not dead, he's yet alive. Clap your hands everybody and give God some glory. Well, magnify the name of the Lord and let us exalt his name together. I came to give him glory. Are you ready for your next? Are you ready to leave from yesterday into the tomorrow? I'm looking forward to what God is getting ready to do. Eyes have not seen. Oh, ears have not heard. I talk out. Hey, neither has it entered into the heart of man. But God has in store for FOMA. <laughs> Clap your hands one more time and give God praise. Come on one more time, amen. As one of the pastors in FOMA, amen, I am excited about being here. It is a wonderful atmosphere. The atmosphere is charged. A wonder, I actually felt the glory coming up the walkway. So you're actually pulsating outside the building. And you have to be, when these amount of people get together and begin to praise God on one accord, what you think going to happen? Huh? I'm, I'm looking for somebody to get out of a wheelchair. I'm looking for somebody to say, I got healed. I'm looking for somebody to say, I don't need my diabetic medicine. Who huh? shot? I'm, 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 this is the atmosphere. This is the atmosphere. This is the atmosphere. Who shot? your hands and give God some praise. We honor the man of God. Hallelujah. My men, watch yourself. Watch yourself. Don't you, don't, don't. don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. If you don't, I might win. I might not just might. If you don't, I will. I come to give him love. Magnify the name of the living God. Clap your hands, all you say, and give God some praise. Uh, the end of the book. Watch out. Watch out, Elder. 
It could be your night. It could be your night. Are you ready for your next? Are you ready? Is there any expectation? Is there any expectation for what God is getting ready to do? I'm expecting God to move. I don't know about you, but I came with an atmosphere. I came, I brought the atmosphere with me of expectation. Hey, bless the Lord. You looking for it? Well, you just may see it tonight. <laughs> he said, you just might see it tonight. You might see it tonight. All it takes is faith for you to see it tonight. I see it, although I can't see it. I still see it. Don't that sound paradoxical? I can't see it, but I see it. My faith tells me it's, it's right there. I can see clearly now. All right. There's only one Bishop Posley. Have your seats. I don't see it, but I can see. There's nothing better than being able to see what you can't see. Somebody else might tell you, I don't I see it. All right, let me move, let me move. Because Bishop Ross is one of the premier voices of this time. And there's only one preacher. And one of the things I learned from my roots, do your assignment. And I don't want our protocol, our protocol president to get on me. So listen, we're going in this order. I am going to read Bishop Ross's bio immediately after the bio. I'll read a few sentences. Immediately after the bio, we are going to welcome our guest tonight, our minister, Kimmy. She's going to come. And then after that, well, she's coming with the Simonic Soul. And after that, we will be in the hands of Bishop Ross. Amen. Her bio reads on this wise. Bishop Monique Ross, a, a dynamic and profound minister of the word of God, is the senior pastor of Predestined for Purpose Ministries. Bishop Ross is predestined in the house? I said predestined ought to make some noise. Yeah. Bishop Ross has dedicated her entire life's work to the ministry and gospel of Christ. Her dedication and obedience to the Lord has propelled her from the place of process to destiny. I love that sentence. It said her obedience has propelled her. There's something about being obedient. Obedience comes before you are propelled. Since her commitment in 2003, Bishop Ross has grown tremendously over the years, and without hesitation, she drastically dived into the work of the ministry, teaching Bible studies weekly, starting a powerful dance ministry called Dunamis Praise Dancers, served as a praise and worship leader and choir member, worked in the administration, the financial sector of the ministry, and much more. Her dedication has been seen by many and she has developed many youth and young women, teaching them what it takes to mature in their minds and spirits and how to serve God wholeheartedly as she learned to. Bishop Ross is known as a Bible scholar, the greatest student and the most excellent teacher. Her ability to exegete the word stems from her love and appreciation for the Bible. Is that good? I stop there? All right. We thank God for this tremendous woman of God. As I said, she is a premier voice. And I wouldn't dare just limit her to this region. She's a premier voice to the world. And I ask of one request from each and every one of you tonight, you don't have to say it out loud, but within your heart, just say, Lord, open my heart to receive. 
So after our guest, Minister Kimmy, has come, you will be in the hands of our Bishop, Monique Ross. We ask that you would stand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, God is in this place. I'm so grateful just to be here once again. Overseer Young, thank you. Lady Young, God bless you. To Bishop Ross, God bless you. Anybody came to worship the Lord? Can we just rest on our feet if those of you who are willing, come on, give them your best. Hallelujah. It's so good to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We can't move without him. We can't shift without him. We can't do anything without him. Somebody said, not by might, nor by power, but by his spirit, we will move. Come on, someone just clap their hands in the atmosphere. He's wonderful. He's glorious. You are great and greatly to be praised. God, you live here. You rest here. And so, Lord, have your way in this place. In the name of Jesus, we glorify you. We magnify your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, because you are good. Thank you, Jesus. The song says, Not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. We will move. Yes, Lord. Anybody believe that tonight? We will move. We thank you, Lord. Not by might, nor by power, but by your spirit. We will move. Yes, Lord, we receive you, Lord. We will move. I like this part right here. This song says, Receive his glory, receive his love. Overwhelm us with your spirit. Yes, Lord, overwhelm us right now. Receive his glory, receive.
and bless the name of Jesus come on and take a second and lift high the name hallelujah he is worthy to be praised you can do a little bit better than that come on and lift up the name of Jesus he is worthy to be praised hallelujah we thank the Lord amen for who he is we bless the Lord for who he is. We thank the Lord for who he is. Amen. Come on, and while you're yet still standing, come on and give it up for the angel of the house, Bishop Designate. God bless you, Doc. Amen. Daryl Young and his beautiful wife. Blessings, Lady Young, Lady Dent, Pastor Cannon. God bless you to your lovely wife. Amen. Lady Cannon. Amen. To all of the ecclesia, I don't know all the pastors and the bishops, but to every pastor, bishop, Bishop Pusey, did I say that right? Posey, I'm sorry. God bless you. Amen. I see you got fire on the inside. Amen. He's got fire on the inside. Amen. To all of my father's children, I bless God for each and every one of you. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. I thank God for PFP in the house. I see a lot of PFP in the house. God bless PFP. Amen. To each of you, we bless the Lord, to all of the, the FOMA family. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Grateful to be in the house of the Lord with you on tonight. In all the years I've known you, this is the first time I'm here. It's a shame before God. I'm sorry. 
I'm gonna apologize. It's all right. It's okay to apologize. You ain't too wrong. Amen. I'm I'm, I'm sorry because we doubt sure is right here. You know, so my bad. Amen. But we thank the Lord. Amen. We thank God for you ministering tonight. Amen. God bless you. Amen. To each and every one of you, love you all. Amen. Grab your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Matthew chapter 12. I'm not a singer, but there's a song that says, I'm not a singer. If you would only trust him. Can somebody just help me sing that? Trust him. Trust me. Or oh, if you would only, if you would only trust, oh, come on and trust him, oh, trust him, trust, oh, if you, if you would, oh, anybody trust the Lord tonight? Anybody know that that is where your hope, your trust, your refuge is in the Lord? Hallelujah. Oh, he said, I'll fight your battles tonight if we trust him. If we will trust him, he'll fight our battles. He's the God that stands in the midst of us and wars for us. I wish you would take a second and just with your voice lifted, give God a worship tonight. Hallelujah. Uh, begin just to worship the King of Kings. Hallelujah. He said, I am. He said, he's the I am that I am. Trust him. We trust you tonight, Jesus. Trust him. Oh, shada da bani o shaya. Oh, if you would only trust him. Somebody sing, trust him. Trust. Oh, baba shada da bahaya. Do you have a worship? Trust. He's worthy to be praised. Will you trust him tonight? Somebody say, I'm going to trust him for the release of my deliverance. The release of my miracle. The release of my breakthrough. Amen. Just for one more second, if you would lift your hands and just begin to say something lovely to your God. From the fruit of your own lips. What do you want to say to your God? From the fruit of your own lips. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day, Jesus. We are putting our trust in you, Jesus. For you said you'll keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. And from the fruit of our lips do we give you worship. Hallelujah. And from the fruit of our lips do we give you praise. God, we open up our lips. And we bellow out a worship that is due unto your name. We're coming to you empty. We're coming to you broken. Our hand is lifted. Our mouth is open. We're shouting unto the God that reigns. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name. I worship you, hallelujah. I give you glory. I want to unlock the manifestation in this place. So with my mouth, I praise you. I'm pressing into your presence today. I'm pressing into your presence today. I'm pressing in. With the fruit of my lips, I give you worship. With the fruit of my lips, I give you praise. Oh God, without being pushed, without being prompt. Oh God, I'm opening up my mouth. And I'm bellowing out a worship unto my God. Oh, who is worthy to be praised. If you know how to uh, pray in your heavenly language, pray in your heavenly language just for a few moments. Oh, 
We bless the name of Jesus. We give God the glory. We worship your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. And he's worthy to be glorified. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. We glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I just want you to push a little bit more in worship. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. From the fruit of my lips, I give you glory and an amandoya. He can add a basson, the dead of the ocean, the dead of the Bahia. He can tell it in the big ocean, the dead of the Bahia. We want an angelic visitation, God. He can an amandoya, the dead of the Bahia. So we're connected with the sound of heaven in the big on the ocean. He did it in the ocean, and I'm on the sea. We want to connect with the sound that comes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy at Abahoshia. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Worthy is your name, oh. She commanded the Bosha. Eh, oh, Shada da da bando. Yeah, Matthew chapter 12. Ah, ya da da banso. Yeah, Oh, oh, Jesus, Jesus. Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to read a few verses. Oh, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 12. I'm going to read a few verses in your hearing. I'm going to read from the Amplified Version. And I'm going to read verses 33 to 37. Young lady, there is a glory that is on you right here with the glasses. Is it okay? There's a glory that is on you. You're, you're right there. You just turned your head with the glasses, the cream shirt. Nope. You just turned around. Yes. Sorry. There is a glory on you, but there's also a resistance. I don't know if it's a heaviness or weight, but it's like the glory wants to break out and you sense it, but there is also this weight can you come here your shirt says something powerful that you need to live your shirt reads something powerful that you need to live can you put that shawl on her can you switch me to just the keyboard please too much too much and the Lord says, I have been your comfort. I have been your guide. I have spoken. And your shirt reads something powerful, faith over fear. But yet still, I rebuke depression that consistently visits you in the night season. I rebuke that tormenting spirit that's been attacking you from you were in your teenager, teenage years. 
the devil Oshaya, the thirteen year old Bashu Kondaya, Retebe Oshkataya. I rebuke that spirit that wants to terrorize you. From 13, the abuse, the things that you're still holding on to that still has a voice. But we silence the voice of every other spirit. Because the Lord said, My glory wants to be a It wants to be on leash I want somebody to point your hand toward and say stand in your freedom the word is good but you gotta stand in it the Lord said it's good but you gotta stand faith over fear God said this scripture needs to be your life this tagline needs to be the journey and I come against the memories that visit you at random times the memories and when they come they arrest you the memories that come and they become triggers I shut the door of every trigger the Lord uproots every emotion I rebuke every night terror and every voice you could be okay and then all of a sudden a memory hits you you could be alright and then all of a sudden a memory hits you and it pulls you into a deep weight of depression but I hear the Holy Ghost say to tell you if you will only just call on my name Amando Shaya God said I'll do to you like I did for Peter he was sinking but my hand lifted he was sinking but then he got lifted God said if you call on me even when you feel like you're in the sunken place you study a lot you read a lot but the Lord said the problem is that you give place when the mentality when the when the memories and the ideas come when the words to speak into your ear gates when the enemy comes oh, for the word's sake when the enemy comes oh God you are not casting down but you are entertaining it and the Lord said you got to begin to practice the casting down and putting into captivity every thought we close the door we close every portal that's open in you I close every portal that is open demons that come in the dream realm spirits that come in the night season oh we even restore your innocence oh she by your suko ramandia seal 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 Seal. Ah, yeah, yeah, your bosha. Seal. 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 Eco masi. I'm sealing you up, say the Lord. Manonde de behesia da da bohosha. Oh, Ramanda, removing you off the scent of every hounding spirit. De banda sea. Oh, Ranando koshatai. Removing you off the scent and in it and saya Mande kosa every hit that comes oh you won't fall to Mande de de kosha in the name of Jesus Your air gates are anointed to hear the voice of God only 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 and can I say something sometime when we have dreams we have to discern, can the person handle what we're getting ready to tell them so that we don't share things that further move people off kilter or brings them into a place of analytics or over analytics when they're not mature enough to handle the revelation. You pray for them until they're ready to handle it because you can further create more damage. Yeah. Ha! 
Shikamando Seredebe Eka. Every time we see something, it's not always to be addressed. Because sometimes we create more. But I hear the Lord say, I want to flush your ear gates, young lady. And your prayer now has got to be, God, every trigger in me, close it. Yes, Lord. And every memory, yes, Lord. I need you to start putting some scriptures mm -hmm. to combat. That means if a bullet comes, you got another bullet to hit back. You cannot go with nothing to hit back because then all you do is taking hits. Yes, and negative memories are hits. Say that again. Am I making sense? They're triggers. They awaken. And then sometimes three weeks later, we're just coming out of the emotional trauma of a memory. And that's been happening to you a lot. And then you go to bed and then the dreams. And then you wake up feeling unworthy. And then the depression sings it. But you already have what you need. You just got to work it. You got to work it. You got to work it. You got to work it. Matthew chapter 12. I see Prophet McCamry in the house. My, my big little brother. Hallelujah. You think he's my big brother, but he's my little brother. <laughs> we bless God for Prophet McCamry in the back. God bless him. Amen. Amen. Matthew chapter 12, reading from verses 33 to 37. I'm going to read the amplified version. And it says, make, uh, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. Yeah. For the tree is recognized and judged by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can we speak good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks out of that which fills the heart. The good man from his inner good treasure. Now, when I read that, it, it just, my brain kind of went over to we have a treasure in earthen vessels. So that means where I'm speaking out of is directly connected to the kind of treasure that is within me. Brings out good things and the evil man from his evil treasure. Uh-huh. Brings out evil things. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people have to give an accounting for every careless or useless word they spake. Let me read that again. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will have to give an accounting for every careless or useless word they spake. For by your words, reflecting your spiritual condition, you will be justified and acquitted of the guilt of sin. And by your words, rejecting me, meaning God, you will be condemned and sentenced. Father, we thank you as we go to the preaching and the teaching of your word. Even now, we pray that you would anoint these lips of clay and cause this tongue to be that of a ready writer, that I may rightly divide your word of truth and bring forth clarity, revelation, power, exhortation, correction, comfort to the ears and the minds of your people. Manifest your glory and move by your spirit as we give you thanks. Let the devil be horrified and your name be glorified in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. You may have your seats. I don't aspire to preach to you very long, um, but I... I was, uh, as I was meditating on what the Lord wanted me to speak, I actually was battling because I had to preach on Monday and I, I wasn't sure if the Monday word was the word. So I started another word, then the Monday word became the word and then this word became today's word. It was a really messy situation in my brain, amen. I'm gonna ask y'all to pray like I've asked all the other churches I've been at to pray for me that this um, natural hair stays, amen. Uh, <laughs> Praise God. It's been the it's been the prayer. It's been the prayer request of every request I've been to since Saturday. Amen. That that this silk press doesn't become a fro. Amen. Praise God.
Hallelujah. So if the saints, especially the women who are natural, pray with me. Monet will hold herself together. Amen. Praise God. So many times, uh, as I, again, as I was meditating, the Lord said, releasing your deliverance. That's what I want to talk to you from a theme of. And you can theme it yourself. You can theme it yourself when you're done. Give it your own theme, but that's just, that's just what I got. Amen. Many times um, there's a question in the life of many believers and we ask God, why are we not experiencing our deliverance or the totality of our deliverance? Why does it seem that God is not answering or sometimes it feels like God is so far away? And it seems like it ox it's oxymoronic because the word of God tells us that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. And then we have other scriptures that says he will never leave us nor forsake us. So then we ask ourselves the question, why at times does it seem like the answer and the presence of God is so far away from us? And it's funny because the spiritual realm, which is all around us, it's interesting that it exists. It is in constant operation. That means the spiritual realm is extremely active all the time. If you are not in the spirit, you don't understand that. But anybody who lives a spiritual life understands the activity of the spirit realm. It's very active all the time. But the interesting part is that as believers, we don't just go into that realm. We must access the power of the spirit through faith and confession. Right, You have to access, whether you are serving uh, and we're walking in witchcraft or you're under demonic possession or you are born again and walking according to the spirit of God, everybody must access the spiritual realm. Am I making sense? Some yeah. things got to ignite your accessing the spiritual realm. And the thing with the church is that we're lazy. We don't like to access, but we, we want everything from the spirit realm, but we don't want to do the work to open the door and get the access necessary that comes through faith and confession. Faith and confession and I know it we think it's so much deeper but it really is not by faith we have access that's what the Bible says so it's very simple we make it very deep but it really is not your faith and your confession will determine your level of access and the dimension that you are able to unlock and some people are entering in but you are stuck at a certain dimension that is not enough to unlock what God wants to do so some people are only at the very door but they have not really gone into the depth of the spirit where you're able to now see and unlock tell your neighbor I need to be able to unlock I want to unlock what we profess is going to determine the realm which you live and access. What you speak, what you speak, what you speak. And I say that again, not what you're gifted with. Not your gift of prophecy, not your gift to preach, not your gifts. That's not what gives you access to the realm of the spirit. It is what you say. Uh -huh. I know we don't think it's that simple, but it is simply that simple. What you say, what you say, the spiritual realm, which is always active, it's what you say. Mm -hmm. The thing you profess is going to determine the realm you live. And it's going to determine what you can access because you access different things at different realms. Am I making sense? If you live in the first dimension, you only access first dimension things. And what are first dimension things? Say they are sensual. But if you go up to the second dimension, you're tapping into another realm where you're now in communication with the Holy Ghost, but you are still too close to the first. So you find yourself always in a mental battle between the dimension of heaven 
heaven and the dimension of the earth. But if you transition to the third dimension, now you have a cleaner frequency between you and the spirit. But most believers only live in the first. And then when they come to church, they tap into the second. Or when you're in a fasting, you tap into the second. But in your everyday life, you always live in the first. And in the first, there is a problem. You don't want to pray in the first. In the first, you get tired every time you try to pray. In the first, you can tap into the dimension of tongues. Can I say tongues? Some people, the reason why you have not yet been filled, let me say it like this to the pastor so nobody don't shoot me. Uh, God, the reason why some people are not filled with the Holy Ghost is that you still live in the first. You're too carnal to tap into the Holy uh, God. And until you get to the second dimension, you're not even able to flow in speaking in tongues. And then the people that speak in tongues and then they don't speak in tongues or they speak in tongues and then they lose it it's because you know you you're in the second and you keep going with two or second and first when you get to third nobody got to prompt you oh god oh you don't even need i'm gonna say this and i may get i may somebody may get me in trouble but i don't even think you need unction when you get to third when you get to third i can get up and say shake it i don't even need the holy ghost to tell me speak in tongues when you get to third lord jesus you can be asleep oh god when you get to third you don't need the holy ghost to tap you to speak in tongues no 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 i live here so this is my tongue this is my language somebody say it's my language it's my it's my language so where you live is going to determine what you can access and some people are not getting answers and they're not getting the totality of their deliverance because you're not living in the dimension that allows you to access your deliverance you're living in a dimension where the enemy has still too much access to you so that you cannot sustain what you got am i making sense proverbs 18 y'all sit down because i got sit down y'all getting me excited I can't get excited yet. Proverbs, Proverbs, Proverbs 18, 20 to 21 and the Amplified. I'm going to give you this in two versions because I just, I thought this was interesting. Proverbs 18, 20 to 21 says, A man's stomach will be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. He will be satisfied with the consequence of his words death and life I know we only quote that part death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it and indulge it will eat its fruit and bear the consequences of their words I, I'm trying to tell you we keep trying to think if I fast enough I'll get into the realm of the spirit no because you can fast now and you can still have a potty mouth you, and I don't mean you're cussing I don't mean you're cussing I'm not even going that far I'm talking about a potty mouth in the spirit you speak about doubt and what the enemy is doing and how the enemy is so strong and I can't and I don't understand and why I always gonna be me your mouth in the spirit realm is reckless because you don't realize that what you say what you say is closing up some deliverances for you God told you you're gonna be free but the moment you walk out of the prophecy and it didn't happen your mouth begin to say all oh, kind of see I don't even know why they told me that is exactly why I didn't want no other prophecy and what you did you just locked up the realm of deliverance so now what you're looking for huh, is not being released Let me give it to you in the message Bible. The message, I like this Bible. It's the ghetto Bible, but I like it. But I like it. The, the message Bible says, words satisfy the mind as much as a fruit does the stomach. Good talk is, a gratify, is as gratifying as a good harvest. Words kill, words give life. Their poison or their fruit, you choose. I love it. You choose. And many in the body of Christ lack the manifestation of the spirit and the power of God because of the words we speak. We lack the manifestation and the power because of what we say. The soul cannot be satisfied because the words that are being spoken, confessed, and professed are defiled and negative. you got to be careful because this is why the enemy comes to speak to your mind because out of your mind is where you're going to speak. And if your mind is not governed by the word, 
then you have a problem because your language is too familiar with the carnal. Your, your language is too familiar with your old life. Your, your language is too familiar with the dead things. Your, your language is too familiar with doubt. Doubt rolls off your tongue too quickly. Lord God, gossip rolls out too quick. Cussing somebody, it rolls out too, it, if it rolls out that quick, I'm too familiar. It shouldn't make me second guess. I should feel bad. I'm too familiar if I don't check myself before I wreck myself. I'm too familiar. If it's my first response, I'm too familiar. Somebody say, don't be familiar. The words believers are speaking, the words that believers are speaking is opening a portal for Satan to steal, kill, and destroy. Can I say that again? It is your words that's opening the portal. Lord, the, the, the action is the end. I'm going to just say that. When you got to the sin act, you just completed the cycle. Let me say it again. When you completed the sin act, all you did was close the cycle. Because the sin act didn't begin in the act. It began in the mind. It be, the Bible says when sin comes in and it begins to speak to the heart and it begins to have a conversation and then it goes and then it gives birth. And then the Bible says and then it gives birth to death. So the action of sinning is the completion of the birthing of what was in your belly all this time. So the moment you started to talk, you already created a portal and the problem is we're trying to create closed portals that we open by our words let me say that again oh the devil is like attack i rebuke every spirit but your words is the very thing that opened the portal wow. Lord Jesus. open the portal until eve saw confessed and consumed until saw eve saw confessed and consumed Satan was only a voice he was only an influence let me say that again until she saw confessed and consumed he was only a voice he was an influence but he wasn't a power let me Lord God Lord have mercy because he was looking for power. Lord have mercy. Let me say that again. He wasn't a power. He was looking for power. So he needed to get her to see, confess, and consume. So that she can give him power after her consummation. Am I making sense? Until she consumes. He's only a voice. He's the voice of a serpent rolling around looking for somebody. But the moment he gets her to see. Once, once he gets her to see, once he gets her to consume, once he gets her to confess, then he becomes a force. Lord have mercy. He started out as a voice, but the moment he gets her to confess, the tree looks good. The God don't want me to be like him. He becomes a force. All of a sudden, a voice got power because of our voice. Let me say that again. Some demons you're dealing with, they have gotten a power because of what you said about Kandio Shaya. Lord God, it was an influence, but when you started to speak out what was was being influenced in your mind you gave that spirit dominion satan had no power until she began to see confess and consume am i making sense am i making sense he becomes a force and then he graduates from just a force to an atmospheric power and stronghold he starts out at a voice by the time she confesses he becomes a force by the time she begins to have babies and Adam eats with her he becomes because he needs Adam why because Adam gives him the atmospheric rank Lord God she gives him the womb oh, but Adam gives him the rank so now he's got the womb and the rank and some of us we're giving devil the womb and we're making him take succession of our spiritual authority and we're messing up because of what we are saying uh. 
we need to begin to position ourselves to release our deliverance but it starts out by changing our language we got to do it the first key to unlocking the power of the spirit the first way that I'm going to ask God, Lord, I want to change my way so I can start seeing my deliverance take manifest and root. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to watch how what I say. I'm going to change my confessions. I got to be careful of what I confess. I got to be careful of what I say. What you say is so powerful, even in the judicial system. When they put somebody under arrest, they say, anything you say shall and will. Lord God, that means we're taking jurisdictional right over your words. That that means everything you say from this point on we have jurisdiction to use it against you Lord God let me say that again the moment you got born again everything you say the devil says I will use it against you if you want if you don't watch your words I'm gonna watch them you don't want to be careful what you say don't worry I got you cuz every time you talk crazy I'm gonna use it against you in the court of law and many of us the reason why our de deliverance is locked is because we're giving the devil too much power over our words am I making sense just as through confession Satan gained right once she confessed and she consumed Satan gave gained power and access imagine he's just a spirit looking in the garden because he's in prison he's in prison he's in prison you got to remember he he was in heaven that was his habitation when he was thrown down where was he put he was put into a prison so he's in prison looking for somebody with power in his prison to make him a ruler in the prison Lord Jesus I think y'all dismiss that Lord God you're letting the thing that you should be standing on that you've been called to guard take power and shift position with you don't let the devil change destinies with you he's the first demon that instituted the changing of destiny why? Because he changed destinies with Adam and Eve. He became the dominion keeper and they became the worker, Lord Jesus. But I will not let the devil make me a worker to what I should have dominion. Am I making sense? He gains power to access. And so through confession and faith, and so we see it's the same thing because then Jesus comes and humanity must be saved. But what is a requirement for humanity to be saved? What is they must confess? Now look at the reversal in the spirit. Eve confesses and she becomes possessed. And the satanic serpentine spirit takes over her mind and her husband. To the point that they become dressmakers instead of dominion key holders. They become fashion designers. Oh, God have mercy. They become they become fashion designers because we we sew in figs together to make clothes. We stripping trees that we should cover so that we can cover ourselves, right? And so. But then Jesus comes and says, I got to reverse this order. So in order for you now to be saved, I need you to do what Eve did, but not to Satan. I need you to do it to me. I need you to believe that I need you to see and I need you to confess. So if you will confess with your heart, do you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, then you shall be saved. You can't be saved until you confess. The Bible says in Romans 8, 10, right? 8 through 10. But what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith. Of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be what? Saved. For with the heart one believes and with and and believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses unto salvation because it was a confession that broke us so it is a confession that is going to heal us 
Uh, but many people are still going back to the garden situation and are still being broken by their confession. Some of us, we all guilty, honey, so you ain't got to say nothing, all of us. Lord God, we have allowed the enemy to break us because we confess what we should not have. And later on down the line, the Lord said, why you said that? And you're like, God, I'm so sorry. You feel that you messed up. Uh, God, you know what you said just messed you up because the Lord begins to convict you like, now we got to do a whole reversal because now you got to confess something else to replace what you just confess because it's confession against confession it is word against word this is a word war you if you don't know the word of God you have no power because the sword is the word Jesus became the word I am a living word he was the living word it is all about the word we are words walking we are words walking it's all about the word. It's a word war. We think it's, that's why I say you're not wrestling flesh and blood. You're not, your, your equipment is not this, it's word. So if you don't become a governor and a, a mature in the word, you losing. You need the word because the devil is not coming with you to you. With, he doesn't care about this time. He's an ancient spirit. Let me say that again. He's an ancient he don't care about 2024. He's ancient. He looking like, honey, I'm a trillion years older than you. I've seen people of all distinctions. I've seen hearts of all colors. I can just see when you were born and know what you'll become and what I can use to manipulate you. So spiritual realm, as I said before, is not unlocked by your gifts. The spiritual realm is unlocked by your words. And it's amazing because we watch God do it. In creation, the earth was formless and was void. And God said. God didn't touch. He, didn't, he, he said the worlds were framed by the word of God. That's what the Bible says. So we watch God do exactly what we're talking about tonight. He unlocked realms through words. Let me say that again. How are you going to unlock realms? Through words. So we watch God. He speaks the earth in order. He speaks the earth in order. And then in Job it says, thou shalt decree a thing. And it shall be established. And the crazier part of that, the flip side to that, uh -huh. Bishop Desna, is that gifts outside of the governance of God's word uh -huh. pollutes the spiritual realm. Yes. So if you're gifted without the word, wow. Yeah. Wow. this is where we've gotten an altar. Yes. This is where the, the spiritual realm started to become not just pure. Because we have everybody being born with gifts, but everybody who's born with gifts not governed by word. And if you're outside of the governance of word and you have gifts, you're a pollutant to the realm of the spirit. Let me say that again. If you are operating in gifts without governance of the word, you are a pollutant. All you're doing is polluting the atmosphere. Uh, God, anybody ever been in a church where somebody preaching foolishness and you know it's foolishness. I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it like that. You know they preach it and you can feel the atmosphere feel all it just feel weird why because it is polluting other than liberating but when the word is in the room it do you feel something come alive because it is active oh but if it's not under the government it pollutes and then people leave polluted uh, so this means that as I said before we unlock the spiritual realm with words of covenant and life. Yeah. Not just your words, not just like I feel like God is doing. <laughs> what I feel like. Please don't associate God's move in the spirit with your feeling. It's wrong. Change your verbiage. If you don't know what else to say, say I sense. But don't say I feel because that's, that's too, it's too fickle, you know. And you may feel like this to, right now. And 30 seconds later, you feel something different. We can't trust you. <laughs> if you tell me you feel it and I just don't know, we can't trust you. Am I making sense? 
So you unlock it through words of covenant. Again, that's why you need the word. Because if you're going to unlock realms, you're going to do it through his word, which is an everlasting covenant. So we can also unlock the spiritual realm. The crazy thing is we, oh, we unlock it, but we can also lock it, meaning close it. Some people have locked, closed the spiritual realm over their lives because of fear, unbelief, doubt, which leads to death. That's why the Bible says death and life. That means when you stand in the realm of the spirit, there's always two paths before you. Because unfortunately, because of satanic con uh, uh, contamination, it's not one realm of the spirit, it's two. This is why when people say stuff like, I believe in the universe. I love it. You know, I love it. And I say, amazing. It's re really great. I said, so in the universe, there are two realms. Good and evil. I'll use that for the people who are unlearned. Because it's really not good and evil. It's light and dark. But, but for people who are ignorant, I just, I'll just say good and evil. Because it's what you understand. Good and evil. So I said, which one are you going to choose? So in the universe, all of this lives. So which one? Because do you believe in witches? Yeah, I know they're real. Okay, do you believe in angels? You know they live in two different realms, right? In the same universe. That's just something for you to go back and tell one of them that asks you. So whenever you're in the realm of the spirit, there's always two. Life, death. And the crazy thing is, which direction you go... It's really your decision. <sighs> and the Holy Ghost, God is so faithful because he knew we were always choosing the death path. So he gave us a gift. Some people are locking the realm of the spirit. Let me, let me, before I get to the Holy Ghost, let me, because I'm going to close with him. Right? But there's something that this thing reveals to us is that Everybody born again does not access or granted access or is guaranteed access to the realm of light. Now the realm of light, that's where your answers come from. That's where your answers, the realm of light. But just because you confess Jesus and you're born again, that does not immediately give you access. It just doesn't immediately. And some people think, but I'm saved now. So why is it not happening? Because you don't have access yet. Anybody ever got hired to a company, but you only had a limited access? And then the more, the longer you're working there or when you get promoted, you go give your ID card to the security and they give you additional access based on your level of rank and authority in the organization. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh-huh. So if you are an administrative assistant, your boss has more access than you because they are a VP. And so their level of access is different than yours. So when you just get born again, don't think because you came to the altar, you vomited two times and then you got up and you started fasting tomorrow that now you got access. No, no, no. You get access and your access is gradually increased as your language changes. Let me say that again. Your access gradually increases as your language changes what you get here is you get salvation oh but when you live you get access let me say that again when you come to the altar you get redemption but when you live you get access let me say that again when you come here you get access to heaven yes if I die I may go home to meet him but when you live you get access to be able to deal with things in the realm of the spirit so some of us like I want to break this generational curse and I want to break this soul tie honey you better live right because the anointing you need for the Holy Ghost to confront some things in you you got to level up and if you don't uh, the kind of access you have you will always need somebody the realm that produces answers is the realm of light 
The realm that produces answers and brings deliverance is the realm of light. Why? Because, and this is the thing what we talked about, not everybody just gets saved. Because why? Uh, because of a darkening in understanding and the knowledge of God. If you are still darkened in your knowledge, he can't give you access. Because if he gives you access, the enemy will run you mad. Oh, can I say that again? If God gives you access with a darkened mind to a certain realm in the spirit, you will lose your mind. I'm not even, I'm not even trying to be funny. I'm being, you will go certifiably locked up in somewhere because if you're not mature enough to handle the realm of the spirit, it will cause you. That's why not everybody that gets saved gets access. No, no, no. I got to watch your life and see your discipline before and see how your language changes and see your operation in faith. And then I slowly increase your level of access because of a darkened understanding and knowledge of God. That's why Paul said, I got to know him. I got to know because it's only them that know their God. Uh, Peter, flesh and blood, they reveal this to you. Uh, you. You leveled up. I can build the church on you because uh, God, the knowledge you have makes you a force against hell until you said you are the Christ. I couldn't put the church on nobody before you. Why? Because what you are, because they're so darkened in their understanding, how they go feed how they go attack how they go say silver and gold have I none but such as I have given unto thee here yeah, take up your bed how you gonna access the realm of faith if you are still darkened in your understanding of who God is and this realm of light this this realm of light this realm of light it undergirds the wisdom of your speech let me say that again why you need to come out of the darkened place why you need to live in the kingdom of light because it undergirds your speech you can know people who are ignorant to God by the way they speak you can learn no people who are mature or have had a encounter with God by the way they speak Oh, am I making sense? It, it, it undergirds. If I'm in the light, it's going to show because it's now going to feed the wisdom by which I speak. Am I making sense? Some are saved, but they find themselves cut off from answers. Why? Because of a refusal to grow in the knowledge and wisdom of God. If you're one of those persons that said, well, God made me like this. And he knew I was going to be like this. I'm really sorry for you. I'm really saddened for your mentality. Because that means you're comfortable being stuck where you are. Without wisdom, our speech finds itself in conflict with our faith. If we don't get out of that... Get into the realm of light and come away from the darkened mentality. What we find is that our speech is in conflict with the faith we confess. We say we believe, but then our speech says something else. We're in conflict. And when the devil sees that we are double-minded, he sways us. I'm I make so then how you're not you can't access the deliverance because you, you, you keep swinging in the pendulum you're you're here and you're here because you don't have the wisdom that settles you that says uh, in all situations I've learned to be content uh-huh I'm all right you can talk about me because the Bible says that I will be persecuted I'm not gonna be mad I'm not gonna ask why I expect it uh, uh, God I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna ask why the devil is doing it this is his job I'm not gonna give up and throw in the towel because I have tenure he cannot fire me and he can't kill me so even if I go down today the devil understands you got only a matter of time because I will like Arnold Schwarzenegger I'll be back Lord Jesus but we got too many Christians that don't understand I'll be back I may be sitting down here scratching my boils today oh but saying I'll be back no we're ready to walk away
away and the devil knows that if you sit there long enough and the Holy Ghost touches you you will be back uh, but some of us don't live long enough to come back the Bible says that know the truth and the truth shall make you free that's in John 8 32 without the knowledge of God we cannot access the realm of light and what I say that's the realm your answer and your deliverance is coming from and we ask him, why is, the, why is it not coming? Why does it feel like God's so far away? Because you need to get deeper into this realm called light. Because that's the access. That's where it's coming from. And without light, we remain subjugated to a darkened, compromised mindset. When Satan was thrown down, the first thing he did was to make the earth dark. So when the devil goes in your mind, the first thing he does is make you dark. Lord, let me say that again. When the enemy came to earth, the first thing he did was turn off all the lights. When God showed up, the first thing he did was turn on all the lights. Jesus, sun, moon, star, turn on all the lights. What, anybody ever, anybody, I, I, I remember my teenage years. You know when you in a room locked up with your friend and your mother opened the door. Why y'all got the lights turned on? Turn on the lights. Anybody, kids, you play in the dark and all your birthday be like, turn on the light. What you doing in here? What you doing in here? Turn on the light. And they come and they look around too like, what's going, what's going on in here? First thing he did was turn on all the lights. And then God said, Satan says, oh man, he done turned on the lights. I can't work in the dark. So since I can't work in the dark in the earth realm, I'll work in the dark in the minds of people. Let me say it again. Since I can't work in the dark in the earth realm, I'll work in the dark in the minds of people. Am I making sense? Without the light. So then Colossians 1.13, I'm almost done, talks about being delivered. Colossians 1.13, Colossians 1.13 says that we are delivered and we are transferred from darkness but it's not talking about a physical place it's not a chamber it's not a prison it's a darkened understanding so when we are translated from darkness into light it's a mindset not a physical position let me say that again because before you got born again you were walking around on this earth realm you weren't in a dark room no, no, no. You were here, but something was dark in here. Am I making it so when God saves us, he delivers us and then he transfers us from dark into light. He turns on the light in your mind. He turns on the light in your mind. A lack of spiritual knowledge and understanding leads to deadly confessions and decisions where there is a lack of spiritual knowledge and understanding it leads to deadly confessions and decisions the light you're being brought to is called when it comes to God it's called the glorious light of the gospel that's why the Bible says in the scripture, I don't remember where it is right now, it says, the God of this world has blinded the minds of them so that they will not see the glorious light of the gospel. So there is a fight to keep you it without understanding. To keep you spiritually ignorant, which means never fully delivered. Am I making sense? Spiritual ignorance means I never walk in the totality of my deliverance. I just come a little bit out, but I never come all the way out. And then we're like, God, what happened? I know I'm so tired. I keep being delivered over and over. Come, come to knowledge. Don't seek another prophet. Go sit down and say, Holy Ghost, teach me your word that I may know your truth. Reveal yourself to me. Bible says he is the greatest teacher. That's Bible. If you lack wisdom, come to me and I'll give it to you because I want to deliver you freely. And the first thing I got to do is I got to change your mind so I can change your speech. 
Because if you're used to getting smacked up, hit up, you're used to narcissists trying to control you, honey, your speech is already laced with a narcissistic response. You're, you're already triggered. So if your mind ain't changed, it doesn't matter how saved you get until your mind changes, you're still under the bondage of your trauma. Am I making sense? So freedom in the spirit is directly connected to truth, which is light. And the Lord is so faithful, man of God, because he said, I don't want you to have to search for it. I don't want you to even have to try to figure out how to discern it. So I'm going to give you a gift. I'm going to give you a gift. He's called the spirit of truth, the paraclete. He will lead you and guide you where? Into all truth. I don't want you to even have to try to define it because you won't. Discern it because you'll mess it up. But if you lean on him, he'll show you it. But the Holy Spirit, and this is again because we lazy, the church is lazy prophet. We want everything for free. The Holy Spirit as a comforter, teacher, leader, he does not function on a one touch. He does not. Holy Spirit is not a one touch. No. I'm sorry. He does. That's not how he, fu he has a ministry. Uh, he's the only facet of God that has a ministry. It's called the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He's got a church. He's got a counseling area. Uh huh. He's got a training department. Uh, he's got a conviction side. Uh, uh, God, the, the, the Holy Spirit got a whole ministry. He's got a school. He, he, he teaches you the gift of prophecy. He teaches you about all of your. He's got a whole. He's the only facet of God that has an entire ministry. He has a ministry. He's not about a one touch. And some people come to church, we want a one touch from the Holy Ghost. Honey, 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 honey. You got an anointing. That's not the work of the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again. Man of God. Because when we come to church and we are going to preach, we say, Lord, send forth the anointing, send forth the glory that will release your people. God gives us an anointing. When you come to up and the altar and you're ready, all I did was release onto you an anointing that then activated what is in you. Now when you went home, Holy Ghost says, now let's take the anointing and let's work it into lifestyle. Am I making sense? Y'all think it was the Holy Ghost that did that? No, no, no. That was an anointing. Oh, that was glory. But the Holy Ghost says, oh, I like it. You got that touch? Yes. Come on. Yes. You got to say, say, mm-hmm. Yeah. When you got home, he said, now let's go study. And you're like, what? I'm tired, yo. you like, what? Wake up early? I'm tired, yo. What? What? I can't, I can't, I can't watch my Netflix right now? No, no. See, because that was the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy Ghost. That's... What you get when you come up here is called an anointing. The release of glory. But when you go home, you got to release. But when you go home, Holy Ghost is the one that says, hey, hey, how you doing? Can we, can we go study now? Hey, it's time for prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, sh sh shut up. Don't say, don't, don't talk now. Be quiet. That, that's, that's the Holy Ghost, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's, that's the, cause he's got a ministry. He partners with you and he is your church. He is your church. He, he is your pastor. He is your internal prophet. He doesn't work on one touch. He functions as a minister. And he's always involving himself in the affairs of your life. So that he can bring, he can be the source of truth to the wisdom that you use to make decisions. He needs to be the source of truth. Because you don't have truth. He is the truth. Bible calls him the spirit of truth. So that's why he walks with you because he's like, I'm the source. You need me.
because every day of the week the devil is speaking to your mind you need me to filter what is God and what is the devil you need me you, and if you deny me you deny the ability to be delivered let me say that again when you deny the awakens of the Holy Ghost you're denying your answer Holy Spirit is the source of wisdom Though you know how James says there's wisdom that comes from above the Holy Spirit is a source of the wisdom that comes from above you know how the Bible talks about demonic wisdom Satan is the source of demonic wisdom and you know how the Bible talks about sensual wisdom well you author sensual wisdom let me say that again <laughs> you author sensual wisdom how do you write that how do you author it you write it based on your experiences and your trauma so sensual wisdom is not coming from any realms it's actually coming from you that's why it's what you feel it's sensual uh -huh. why does deliverance seem so far I'm done and manifestation unattainable because of your words why does deliverance seem so for a wise woman? She, she spoke very little and kept much in her heart. Even Daniel, he had the dream, he gets the interpretation, and the Bible says he was troubled, he was perplexed, but he kept the matter in his heart. Mm. Lord. If your words begin to align... If you align your words with the words of Christ, deliverance is now. Deliverance is now. The Bible says, My, the word is nigh thee. Even in your mouth. That means deliverance is now. Oh, that means if I align my words to God, my deliverance is now. And my manifestation is sure. Hmm. Why? Because when I align my words to God, it puts a demand on God. Let me say that again. When I align my words to God, it puts a demand. That means God is being held to an accountability. Uh, let me say it again. You don't think you have that kind of jurisdiction with God. You bring, you align your words to God. You hold God accountable to work for you. Why? Because Psalms, and I'm done right here. Psalms 138, 1 to 3 says, I will worship toward your holy temple and praise your name for your, not, your loving kindness and your truth. For you have magnified your word above all of your names. In the day when I cried out, you answered me. And and made me bold with strength and in my soul when I align I'm done when I align my words to God I hold God to a charge Lord Jesus oh father I wish I had somebody to say I'm gonna get my words right because I want to be able to hold God to a charge God you said uh, isn't that what Nehemiah did God you said Lord that if we do this you're gonna do that and God said hey 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 I'm being held up to a charge Angels, lose yourself because I got somebody in the earth realm that is holding me to my words. I'm being held to a charge. Somebody say, I want to be able to hold God to a charge. Oh God, that about Solomon said, Lord, you said any prayer that is made in this place. That's why all the way in the book of Joel, they can say, run to the horns of the altar and let us get between the porch and the altar because in Chronicles God said oh God if I God should shut up heaven and I should send the locusts if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray seek my face they'll hold me to a charge and I'm gonna have to release heaven I want someone to say release my deliverance I'm holding God to a charge I'm holding God to a charge no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rise up in judgment I shall condemn Lord I'm holding you to a charge I condemn every negative
negative voice in the name of Jesus I'm holding God to a charge I am the head and not the tail above only and never beneath Lord every miracle that belongs to me loosen now I'm holding God to a charge I'm going into another realm I'm going up in the spirit Esther said fast three fast with me because I'm about to hold God to a charge you put an Esther's grace you put a favor on me fast with me and I'm going to go before the king and when I stand I ain't even got to say nothing because just my walk of faith held God to a charge I wish somebody say I'm going to hold God to a charge I'm going to say yeah The Lord said, I want to release your deliverance. I want to release your deliverance. But I need you to hold me. I need you to come up higher. He commanded higher. He said to John, John, come up hither. I need you in a new dimension. Because what I want to show you, your natural mind can't handle this. Come up. Let me show you some things that's about to come. I hear the Holy Ghost saying, some of you have been waiting on some things but I need you to begin to hold me why why could Job why could Jacob wrestle with God he held God to a charge oh God all night long he held God to a charge I will not let you go until you bless me I'm gonna hold you to this charge because you told me to leave Laban's house you told me to come by this way you told me I should come up to the mountain you told me I should be by myself and I've come not by myself but I'm coming in the power of your exousia he can command I'm coming in the power of your rhema of your logos and I'm gonna hold you God all night long and even when you want to leave me I'm gonna say I'm not letting you go cause by the authority you gave me I got the right to hold you here why could Abraham say father if you find five I said if you find ten I said if you find fifty and even Abraham is shocked how am I talking to God like this when God told Abraham I'm gonna make you the father of many nations you got power to intercede for nations that means even though Sodom was under judgment it's a nation it's a nation I'm just showing you examples so you can see the power you got when he says Abraham father you're the first prophet and first intercessor and I've put in your belly every nation like the stars and through you in that the word all the nations of the earth shall what be blessed so when God wants to destroy Sodom the angels understand I can't hide it from Abraham because the word that God gave him makes him earth's ambassador so they were trying to leave but they realized no we have to tell him and when they tell him oh, when they tell him Abraham said hold up wait a minute angels had to pause oh God heaven had to stop he held God and said God we got to talk cause you gave me rank and I'm holding you to a charge oh God will you find none will you destroy everybody and the Lord said no 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 what do you want what do you want cause he knows he can't deny him cause he's held him to a charge I wish I had somebody say I'm gonna hold God if you if God ever gave you a prophetic word you got a right to hold God to that word if God ever released the prophetic word to you you've got a right to hold God to that word tonight I want you to get that word in your belly and I want 
want you to get it in your mind. He can and for the next 30 seconds, 60 seconds, I want you to pray. Hold God to a charge. Be bold as a lion. Go before God like Abraham. Go before God like Moses. God said, Moses said, God, you can't kill them. If you kill them, what would the enemy say? You can't destroy them. I know you mad. You can't do it. And the Lord looked at Moses and said, you're right. He held them to a charge. You made me their deliverer. How can you kill them when you call me as their deliverer? I hope y'all got this word tonight. For the next few minutes. You're not going to be frustrated with the word over your life anymore. You're going to engage a new strategy. You're going to engage the strategy of engagement. I'm showing up in the prayer chamber. And I'm going to call God to this chamber. And I could do that because I got a word. I didn't give myself this word. He gave me this word. So when I set an appointment in the spirit, Daniel, and say, God, I want to talk with you about what you told me. I hold God to sit and listen to what I got to say. Huh. And what's even better is if I'm really living for God. Uh, what's even better if I've really been surrendered? What's even better if I've really been keeping my body? What's even better is if I've really been trusting him? Then God said, I can't move. I got to listen to you as long as you talk. And by nature of your, cons your, your consecration and by nature of your confession, I, God, must raise up from my seat. Fire comes out my nostrils and I begin to send out an army to fight. I wish I'd ever caught on and ever get Get your prayer in your mind right now. And in the next few minutes, I want you to go to God. Be like Abraham. Be like Moses. Be like those that call God to a charge. And begin to talk to God and say, God, this is the word you gave to me. And everything in the realm of the spirit that's been blocking, stopping, binding up what should be loose for me. Every deliverance that's mine that's being held up. I prophesy in the realm of the spirit. And according to the covenant promise of your word tonight if I got to turn I'm turning if I got to shift my mind I'm shifting because God I'm ready I'm ready release my destiny helpers release my angels release you told me last year I was gonna get a breakthrough this year in the name of Jesus Satan you cannot hinder what the Lord has promised Satan you cannot stop what the Lord has decreed and so I'm speaking according to the decree of God over my life I'm speaking according to the decree of God over my life oh God you told me this was my year God you told me I wouldn't battle with this no more God you told me that this thing was going to manifest now God I'm coming to hold you to your word because you're a God that does not lie and the son of man that you cannot repent oh God your word will never return unto your void but it must accomplish that which you have sent it forth to do I'm coming like Nehemiah fight for me God I'm coming to break this thing open God Be strong in the Lord. And in the power.
power in the power oh baba shoku toto bo ikanana mandostia akata roba bosia give me that lady with the leopard print glasses do not be discouraged baby girl hallelujah god said i made you a promise and everything that's trying to discourage you huh ya da da ye ya who I prophesy that nothing, you will not be shortchanged in this hour. God said, You will not be shortchanged. God said, Everything you sacrificed. God said, Not a partial return. But I hear the Holy Ghost say a full return. Huh. And I rebuke every demonic assignment to shortchange you. Oh my CK. Na na ne. Hush karabande. We arrest demonic spirits in their very steps now. How about Shia Katai? Your prophetic word gives you authority to arrest demons where they stand. Let me say that again. The prophetic word you have, Bishop, gives us the authority to arrest where you going. God told me. Oh Lord, I don't think you understand the authority. That prophecy you got gives you authority to arrest demons. Where are you going? I see what you're trying to do and I cut it off now. Ooh. Put a shawl over her. I want you to say to yourself, everybody, I'm not going to be frustrated any longer. The enemy's been going on a prowl to try to allow us to feel frustrated over the very word. That we got a covenant and that word is, we feeling frustrated by the very word. God, I don't understand. We almost sometimes feel like, God, I wish you didn't give me the word. Because I wasn't looking for it. But then when I got the word, it raised my expectation. Am I making sense? Sometimes the enemy uses that thing to war against us. But I'm not going to be frustrated by the word any longer. Before the word and the enemy tries to use it to frustrate me, I'm going to frustrate every day. I'm going to frustrate every day. I'm going to be annoying to the devil. Not gonna frustrate I'm gonna frustrate you because every time you think you got a leg up I'm gonna ask you what are you doing where you think you going even if it didn't come yet where you going where who are you talking to don't talk to me I got a word and even if that's a human being that he's using tell them to Let me say it again. Tell them to. I'm sorry. I can't talk to you right now. Because I'm believing for something and your words is a contradiction to my faith. And I'm not going to let your words put me in conflict. Oh, I want somebody to say, I'm not going to let anybody's words put me in conflict. The Lord told me, he said, many in the body of Christ, prophet, they're frustrated by the very word. And feeling so discouraged. But the Lord says, I'm putting a demand on the body. Come up to a new dimension and hold me. Hold me. I know what's in your heart, the Bible says, but ask. Ask. I know what you're going to say before you say it. Because while you're yet speaking, I answer. Yeah. But ask. Yes. 
seems oxymoronic why ask if you already know hold me show me your confession hold me show me your faith hold me show me that you know I'm going to hold me hold me to my word why does God want me because he wants me to rise up because I'm dealing with a devil that wants to beat me down so God deals with me like a soldier get up and hold me you want me to come call me because there's a devil out there that don't that don't want you to use this voice so I got to train you hard you want me call me you want to get me to show up pray you want to get me to lose something fast I know what you want ask me because I want you to build up your authority it ain't for me I know what you want to say it's for you it's to get you understanding the general you are because if you know you got power to talk to God what you gonna feel about the devil like if I can hold God to a charge devil is here you 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 are literally nothing literally if I can call God and say God I want to talk to you and I and I can pronounce the word and God is God will sit and my voice will hold God to talk to me all night what am I doing to a devil <sighs> there is a glory on you woman of God and you're one of them that's frustrated has been trying your faith hitting your heart ah, trying to break you down but I hear the Lord say I am not the kind of God that forgets your faithful love your servitude your labor how shy Sukumanda tero du kisa manto kunde de de akosha ya. Si bros ketabanda sukuta. Si orundi amando si kete brondo sa. So I break this yoke. Hura banda siya. The Lord said, I'm breaking the yoke because I'm breaking the assignment that wants to break you. Oba shike. Woman of God. Tiatura de Ekiata. Kingdom warrior. Makonda. Yes, yeah, scream that thing out. You need to let it out. Hurria Payapa. Mando Kukuria Katapapaya. Come here, don't know the whole she. He did it. 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 He Demons, Satan the Lord God rebuke you. Satan the Lord God rebuke you. 
be a killer. Oh, my shit, me. The Lord said, I'm chaining up some demons right now. I hear the Lord say, I'm chaining up some demons right now. There's a big coup to re papaya papaya. That's been messing with your mind. Oh, my shit, oh, my shit, oh, my tepoya pie. Rebe, yeah, so behind the assa. We war with you against discouragement. We war with you against discouragement. Oh man, desiko yapai. Put the shawl on him. Holy Ghost, I'm dressing you, soldier. I'm a okundi reketai. I'm dressing you, soldier. Imando sukona ye ekeya. I'm dressing you, soldier. Rimana na neya. I'm dressing you, soldier. Oh, she go, yeah, she go, yeah, Rikeneneya, Uriya Nanaya, Subria Kateya, Uriya Kateya, Rukia Maposia, Lebron to Kutoya, Sibrekete Pepeya, Rukon to Kutaya. The ones I'm stirring you up, every discouragement, every Ananamanda Robokosia, Babaya Kataya, Ima. Trusting you for the fight, hey, 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 who my man did it, did it, oh, shy. He can on an day. The Lord said, I'm sending angels. I heard the Lord rebuking imps and spirits that's been gnawing at people. The Bible clearly told us he shall bruise our heel. That means we were told from Genesis that he would hit the weakest part of us. Anybody ever watched that movie? What's his name? I don't remember his name. And they hit his Achilles heel. Troy. And that was his weakness. He had supernatural strength, he could live. Just don't hit his Achilles. Whew. But somebody came after the Achilles because he knew if I get that, that's why the sa Satan is always looking for what is your Achilles? Because everybody got an Achilles. Every, everybody got an Achilles. Don't, this is why Satan looked so hard because he knew, he knew, Samson, you have to have an Achilles somewhere on you. There is a weakness. And if I cut that, I cut your dimension. Because he could always come back. I just need to give, I need to cut you off. Not forever, just for a season. He knows he can't cut you off forever. He just wants to cut you off for a season. But I want somebody to say, no more wasted seasons in my life. And since Satan desires one of his intentions one of his plan is to change times and seasons you don't understand one of satan's major intention for you is to change your time and your season the bible says he comes intending to change that means one thing i must guard my time and my season I don't care what you want to do I'm gonna tell you what you're not going to. so one of the jobs I got is to make sure I'm at the portal of every new season 
birthday, new year. I'm at the door of that season. I'm not parting it up. I'm not, I'm not going out with the girls. I'll go out the day after my birthday. The day of my birthday at midnight. Because I got to I gotta watch this portal. Because this is a season. Hey. Uh, at midnight, when it's going into a new year, I'm not out watching a ball drop. No, I'm at, I'm at the portal. I'm at the birthing. So I prophesy everything coming out this portal shall be what God has ordained. Day, you will not change my time and my season. Yeah. God said, there's some stuff I want to change for you. Because you've been in the battle. You've been in and now, up and down, round and round. It's been so inconsistent in your life. Ha. And the Lord is ready to give you stability if you want it riskutia manda ya hey enando sia say no more up and down in the now round and round dodobo shia de de bekosaya but i hear the lord said this is the season of stability he can so ya and god said i'm going to give you comfort cuz one of the things is you are tired Worn, don't know if there's enough strength, but I hear the Holy Ghost say, When you are weak, then I am strong. All you need is not human strength, it's strength of faith. Peter, I'm praying for you. Not that your strength won't fail you, but that your faith, because you're gonna lose strength, just don't lose faith. <sighs> You're going to lose strength, period. Just don't lose faith. And I hear the Lord say, I'm going to comfort you because I need you to stand in your faith. Put it on and hold it. Don't let it go. You, you, you get a little, you know, you got a little thing with you. You get a little annoyed and stuff. You kind of... But the Lord said, hold it together. You know, self-control is a fruit. It seems silly that it would be a fruit. Because some of us, we got to like hold me together, Jesus. Because some of us can go from zero to a thousand. We can go, right? We, we can be very, God said, hold that self together. So the enemy doesn't use it. Self-control is a portal that the enemy uses to break us. Because by the time we come back and gain control, we've done so much that now we've got to go fix. The Lord says, I'm ready. But what I say in this season, follow it to the letter. No in and out. No up and down. No, yes, I hear, but you don't actually do it. Fight to remain consistent. You hear me? I hear the Lord said to tell you, fight to remain consistent. Hey, Because you're good when you're good. And then you off when you off. But part of what causes that is inconsistency. Masuria mansa. But the Lord says, I'm ready for you. I'm ready to lift the weight, birth your new season, say a God. New stability in every area. I'm talking about financial, I'm talking about work, I'm talking about every area of your life that you need. You need it. You need it to feel like, man, my life is going somewhere. Man, I got something accomplished. Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus. Woman of God, the Lord is restoring your body. It's been a few years that you've been going through warfare in your health. And the enemy has tried to use it to discourage you, to break you, to have you in pain. Almost like crippling pain. 
Nabroskitai, but it's been an attack of the enemy. Naman Sukutaya, but I hear the Holy Ghost said to tell you, I am going to heal. I want you to put a shawl and just tie it around this area of her body. Hida Nana Sukuba, Dede Eku Kata. Hinanda suku mandaya. Whew. Shiana mansu rebe. Everything in the lower back. Every sciatic. Ha. Mako se. Nebrondush katabaya. Nakunde de biandosha. Yekondaya. Rebe sukuma. He shanando saya. He rotu kunamanda da bohosha. He womananaya. Shoo. He can an amen suya. You won't get weary. Cause there was a point when you felt almost weary. Marosunda da Bahaya. Put another shawl over her. Kedadandiosha. Makunde de debiando saya. But I hear the Lord say total healing. Nenando yas. Ha! Ho! Shiba yo sure. Nenando ya. Shiba yo sheba. Ha! She! Hish! Hinanaya, hey, Hinanaya, yeah, help, Shubakata. I send every demonic assignment back to dry places. Hey, ay, ay, yosha. I send every demonic assignment, every number kondia rabaya ikonanai. I take over every shrine and every altar. Nabasho lipaya pa yako ando soria pa ya. Let it be overturned upon their own heads. Makoturia bandia se ikonda. We gotta go. Koria manda. We gonna go into one more round of prayer. Come, baby girl. One more round of prayer and then we gonna go. I feel God delivering you, woman of God. I feel him pulling you out of something. I feel God pulling something out of you. Oh, can I get some of the intercessors to help me pray? Because the Lord said, I'm rooting up that sickness. I'm rooting it out. No, 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 we go to the root and we root it up. We're not pruning it, we're rooting it. We're not pruning, we're rooting. We root it up, we root it up, we root it up, we root it. From the bloodline, from the generations, we root it up. Shika baya, rapa ya pa, rebe be 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 ya kondia. No abnormal growths, no abnormal growths, no abnormal growths, no abnormalities, no robot to call. Lipa pa ya pa pa, shebra kondia. We get pruned, demons get rooted. I get pruned, but demons get rooted. I'm not playing with you, I root you up. Get out from the root, cause I want you to die and never come back. Is 
your mom still alive? I'm praying for your mother and some family things that are going on. Nakasuka. There's some family and I see your mom. As soon as I touch you, I heard your mother. And I'm praying that there is deliverance for her and even your connection with her. Nasukundaya. There's some stuff there that's caused some disruptions. But I hear the Holy Ghost say, I'm about to resolve the matter. Mando sikete. And even as you're standing, I'm praying for you and your mother as one. Maroskete de debiandosa. Send forth your healing power. Mando shorabandia to deal with every disruption in the bloodline. To disrupt. God said there's some restoration that needs to happen there too. Because you don't want what stopped her to stop you. Hima Ushikenaya. Oh man, Ikaya. He man died. Jacob had to go back and fix it with Esau. Because I can't let nothing stop me. God said there's some stuff you got to fix. Because you don't want it to stop you. Some things you are justified, but some things you are wrong. And you got to go and fix it. Because I hear the Holy Ghost say that's part of the root. And we can pray tonight, but there's a part you got to do. Oh, 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 oh. We lose you. Whoosh. I feel virtue. Oh, he shy. I feel God in the atmosphere. Healing is coming for you too. I'm about to pray. Healing is coming for you too. God said, I'm healing. External healing, meaning life stuff. And internal healing. Somebody point your hand to this woman and God and say, You're a great success. You're not a failure. And you've had some relationships in the past that has scarred your what you think about yourself. You've had some relationship that has messed with your self-esteem. And every now and again, and then the akuntaya. So I'm healing the external crisis and the internal pain. And he can in the end, oh, yeah, yeah, conda na si. He na na ne, yeah, oh, she na na ne, he can do si. Lipa po ya pa ya koton de 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 ando si ya. Who? Shoo, oh, she a de 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 ya. Success is your portion. Na ya, ya ne, ya ye. We're going to pray. Woman of God in the corner, I want you to loose yourself. Sometimes we lose some things and we... But the Lord said, don't cry over this. Don't cry over this. Don't cry over this one. I know it hurts, but God said you can't cry over this one. You gotta let me be God now. 
Ikanana Oshia. Ire di yandu shia. Nama o raba. The Lord wants to burden us. An enemy wants to burden you with it. But I, I hear the Lord say, let me be God. Ana okondia. Because remember, you only can see but so far. Ana na mansa. The Lord said, let me be God. Because remember, you can only see. Mana oti iki anama ataya. Biti antu shundi ala aye. Kandu mandi koshi kaya. Matunde de moshi. Ine mandu shatele e katoma aya. Eturada asondia kateya. Oh, so Nibandia, so why cry? Why cry? Why cry? What about she? Libabo, Ibabo, Idene, Idadabo Kiato, we are Mundu Kutia, Anu Nuziki Atukaya, and there were some things I revealed to you already. There were some things I showed you. Libabo Sia Labakataya, so Mundu Kuti Bapaya, Iba Soya. Oh yeah, yeah, as she far beyond. The kind of man do she a le endo asa. Subrindi man do she a kata. Don't cry. I said, stop it. Man anando sha. Sometimes we cry over things that God said ain't even it. It ain't even it. Don't, not this one. Maybe another thing, but don't cry over this one. It's going to be all right. And the Lord said, well, at the end of all of this, it's going to blow your mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. We got to go. Woman of God, do you know the word that is on your life? Basukunda le si ilandu ya bo oshaya ni aku masi kita ya hine ni undi aleho si kita ilibi undula akonti elebe okunda bo shi imantu mande iluti kamanda ya imantu basukunda itukunti ele esunda bo ni mukada basukita ba ya hine bo undi alebo suko iti abo shindele be but who lian de sikoba a sintu kumata If you understand, nia lasu. If Joseph understood, he wouldn't cry in the pit. Can I say that again? If, Lord, can I say that again? If Joseph understood, he would be in the pit chilling. If, if Joseph understood, did it ever Ushia? God says some things you're facing, honey, it's fulfillment. It's not for tears. It's for fulfillment. Some things got to make us cry to fulfill the prophecy. Some things got to die to fulfill the prophecy. Some things got to break away to fulfill the prophecy. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, hey, hey. Samuel, why are you crying over Saul? I, I'm done with him. I got another already. Lord, why are you crying? Why would you cry it for? When I did when I found something better for you. Oh, 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 Walk this one out like a good soldier. Don't do it like how you used to do it. Oh, I don't know. And you go into your little motions and you're my God. I don't do that. This walk this one out like a good soldier. This one is making it. This one is gonna make this one is making it. It'll be a show. You gotta walk this one out, baby girl. Malasu kata. Hish. Oh. Oh. You know what happens when we lose somebody that carries a portion of our mantle? We consume it. Let me say it again. You know what happens when we lose somebody that carries a portion of our mantle? We consume it. 
So when it's time to fulfill, sometimes God has to do that. Because Joshua has to consume. Elijah, Elisha has to consume. So the thing that God told you, you have to fulfill, this has to happen first. Because on while they're alive, you both carry a part of the mantle. Yes. So their death is not about, yes, we mourn here, but it's a bigger assignment. We get the fullness of the mantle. This is the reason why if you're a fourth generation prophet, you are stronger than the first. Why? Because the first one was consumed by the second one. The second one, when they go, they hand over the first, the second, and then when the third one goes, they hand over the first, the second, and the third. So by the time you get to the fourth, you got the first, second, third, and the fourth. Oh, the devil, this is why the devil don't like generational. Tries to kill it. Because if you consume it, that's why Elijah does what? Double. Lord God. Moses is a deliverer, but Joshua is a warrior. Uh, uh, Moses gets you to the promise, but Joshua has got to get you to conquer everything that belongs to you in it. Don't cry. I know it hurts. Mourn. Then leave it there. Look up because there's a mantle falling. Let me say that to her again. Look up because there's a mantle falling. Look up. Woo. We got to go. Look up. Somebody tell her, look up. Look up. Because uh, there is a mantle falling. This one, I know it hurts. Mourn. Then move. Mourn. Move. Remember her. Fulfill what she started. Move. We got to go. Woman of God with the hair wrapped. I don't know if it's that your hair or if it's a Lord help my eyes. It's like red. Is that braids? Yes. I want you to lift your hands and just begin to scream, I'm free. Because there's some things falling off of you right now. Can one of the intercessor prayer warriors here just go, be, go to her and just put that shawl on her back and just begin to rub it down like this and pull everything off of her back. Pull everything off. Just sweep it along her back. Sweep the shawl along her back and pull it off. God said, I'm pulling it off. And I'm on no safe. I'm pulling off the weight. I'm pulling off the oppression. I'm pulling off the depression. Pull it off. I need a lady right there in the leopard. Long, long sweater leopard thing right there. She's standing. Come here. We gotta go. Quickly. Oh. There is a glory on you, woman of God. Nah, suku, and the best is yet to come. How many children you got? How many of them are boys? One. I'm praying for your son. Does he come here? No. Praying for him. The totality of his breaking, his deliverance. Basso. Ribe kundaya. God said every time you call his name there is a deliverance coming for him he said every time I weigh you to call his name life God said every time you're breathing life into him yes lord in the name of jesus 
Come on and stand, everybody. We're going to pray. We release a grace on you. He shattered up face for sensitivity. Because God said, you're going to enter rooms. And I'm going to tell you what to say. And I don't want anxiety getting in the way. I want you to be so sensitive that the moment I speak, you hear me. Atiokumansia. Oh, oh, oh. God said, I'm releasing favor on you. I'm posturing myself now, God, to live in a new dimension. I'm posturing myself. Sharasikobanda to ascend. <clears throat> Because this is my hour where every word that you have spoken over my life, there is the fulfillment, the demonstration of the power. No more just excellency of speech. So the Lord told me this morning, but the demonstration of the power. So now, we're posturing ourselves for the demonstration. Father, in the name of Jesus, take us to a new dimension. Before we go tonight, rest a new grace on us. A new wind. Rikesi inana sorabai, iketi andusha, a wind of your glory, nebro sete de debeko, to pass over this room, mandado shia dabaha, a wind of your glory, shia rebando sia, hikanamando shaya, hikanaman soya. The east wind of God. And to those of you who need to recommit, take this moment and recommit. Those of you who need to give your life to Christ, take a moment and come to the altar. Because the Lord said, I'm sending a wind. I prophesy over every single one of you in this room according to the word of the Lord there shall be a performance somebody online you're watching right now and you're finding yourself in tears and the Holy Ghost said there shall be a performance my wind is going to blow over you now. Oh, Rebesia, the Lord said, I'm taking you into a new dimension. Get ready for a new visitation of my presence. Reboso, Rebekinadabahaya. Get ready to hear me on another level, say it, the Lord. Habashonde de Bekosaya, because I'm ready to release Ebando Robokotai to push him under Rebebe Ekai. God said, I'm ready to push Shidebekai to push you. Oh, Rabandi, you say. To push you to a Rebekondia Sai, Horamanda Bohoshia, and every demonic territorial assignment, we decree and declare now that your time is up. Robo Shonda Dabahandia, we have decreed and declared a Kairos moment, and Satan, your time is up. Robo 
Rende de brekete le papaya panda papaya kai ribebe we arrest every demon stealing destinies stealing purpose stealing prosperity stealing peace bringing depression we arrest you in the realm of the spirit the blood of Jesus yakata mamandi ashai the Yeshua Hamashiach Yahweh in his exousia we come in the name of Jesus we arrest every demon by the power of the Holy Ghost La Papayanda da Bohosia Oh oh I hear the Lord say I'm breathing Oh oh I'm breathing I'm breathing in on Receive and a receive and then a a fresh wind. Oh, oh. the Lord said, I'm breathing, receive. Oh, oh, na, na, na. He says, I'm breathing, receive a fresh wind, a fresh wind. He shy, he shy, he shy. Receive a fresh wind. He shy, he shy, he shy. What the enemy meant for evil God will turn it around, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around, turn it around Turn it around, turn it around, turn it around Turn it around, turn it around, turn it around. He by Yeba, he by Yeba, he by Yebe, Rabba by Yababa, Rebebebebeke, we are the Bahaya, Rebebebebea, Rabba Bakosia, Mako Toto, Lipe Pentepeapa, Hova Shay. Oh, I hear the Holy Ghost say, Receive, there is a fresh wind, Mako Tia. Mando, oh, 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 say, hey, 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 oh, my, yeah, 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 don't you worry, don't you worry, hey, yeah, don't you worry, hey, na, na, yeah, don't you worry, oh, shaka, yeah, now, oh, rapo, tepai, ripai, yokoto, Lepe you call Ribando the bonde kete bebe the blood of Jesus oh my I need you to scream young lady I need you to say Jesus Jesus oh my the loosing the breaking in the bash Oh my man don't say Don't you worry Don't you worry Don't you worry hey 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 uh, uh, God said, by your God, you're going to come over this. You're going to come over this. Are you born again? Born again. The release. The release. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 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 Cycles will not be repeated in your lives. Kada sekete. Cycles. Cycles. Cycles shall not be repeated. But we prophesy there is a new road before you. Madesika. Ayadodobohosha. And you shall take the path. That'll lead to success. Mananeya.
Bishop, there is a glory on you. Mandanaya. How shikaya. Oh, oh. Shamandiosa. Oh, somebody say a new manifestation of his glory. There's been some struggle even with ministry. There's been some warfare. It's not been easy. It's not been easy. Nila akala ayala a sela ayla akalai le ikamalo ala akaya ni a ula ne la kunda la yela a ukunta i alo shala ai butu undia a ulai iki ma o ni anasu ma ale ekunda to whom much is given, much is required. Malai ile nala la kun le aya, but to ushi ile, God says, get ready. Ma ukuma shika na no eena. Oh yana, oh divine turnaround. And then the did you sha? God said there is a divine in the ando release and in the andio and turn around. They did the andio, the the andi, the 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 boho. She had the the ya. Who my man did the oh she had the the andi, the 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 boho. Oh yeah, hey, oh 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 yes lord oh Kunene sheene hamayone ne yo, humaya nan soye ye ya, hi, humaya ne ya na ne ya ho shaya, hu, oh oh oh. The breaking now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Are you born again, baby girl? Yes? Mm -hmm. There is a calling for higher. And there is a calling for more. There is a deeper calling. God said deeper revelation. And you want it. So it's going to be easy. God said you want this new dimension. God said you want it so bad. And I'm going to give it to you because every time you get into that word and you pray before you read get ready to be flooded with the revelation and I bind that which tries to confuse your mind even when you read the word I come against the war that rages against your thoughts that's trying to block you from coming into the knowledge oh oh basa he shabayaka the release in the name of Jesus. We gotta go, we gotta go. Oh, 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 oh. There's some hurt you gotta let go. Mm. Sometimes we can't talk about it. Mm. So all we do is just hold it inside. Mm. Mm. Sometimes we can't, and that's what you've been enduring. I can't talk about it. Who do I talk about this with? How do I share? How do I talk without being looked at crazy? The Lord said, you got to lay this stuff down. You don't want anything blocking the flow of the prophetic grace that is on your life. And you have a powerful discerning anointing. Not just a gift, but there is a way it manifests through you. Naneya, Iya Naneya, 
and the enemy wants you to be emotionally blocked. Mati okunda lasi neros ketabandia. I hear the Lord say, release it. If it means a letter in tears, finding someone that is not connected to no one. But you got to release. Yeah, yeah. Because it is a trap to block your, em your discernment through your emotional. Maka sakai. Keta laka. Malosukuna. The Lord says, I'm going to heal your heart. And I'm going to fix some personal areas that has damaged you over the years and continue to damage you. Nikasu. I'm going down the corridors of your life. Even from like 18 years old. And I'm healing your heart from the hurt. I'm healing your heart. God said, I don't need you blocked up. So release. Scream it, cry it. Find a place you don't have to hold your composure. And get it out. Father, we thank you today. And we bless you for your presence and your word. When you move, God, we show honor to you. Because we know that no glory goes to anybody else. But that all of the glory goes to you. And so we blow kisses to you and we say thank you for your presence. Grab a seed in your hand. I need everybody that can grab a $100 seed to grab that seed. Young lady, can I just talk to you while you're getting a seed? God is working come here is working on the inside of you and there are some walls that you still gotta let down because Fort Knox is still you close y'all close not as close as you used to be but still close a little too close the Lord says I'm gonna bring those walls of pain, anger, depression, frustration. God says, I'm going to slow one wall at a time. As I birth the warrior. But some things are not for us trying to say there is a work and I know sometimes it's hard sometimes oh but the Lord said when you see you're about to see okay and is to replace old hurts to replace being healed we heal and unlock so there are gifts that are unlocked aspirations that are unlocked. ah yeah I'm excited for you everybody that can join me with that hundred if because now you got a new knowledge. You're giving something else. We thank you. We can't pay God for his presence, but we appreciate him for his presence. Be you. Else be to see all the things I should. Because everything I was supposed to is my crown. Bless the seeds of your deliverance. In Jesus' name, God bless. Everybody. Are you coming? Please make sure if you're on, the, on, on our screen, please. Bishop. For the message, pray that you give her strength. She has to do. We thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. That this message, God, one came to me and kept telling me, God is going to get a prophetic. I don't, I don't try to get. And something with Bible school, right? It's going in and out. I also saw a group of people rally. You got to take this money for your anguish. Of a certain, I was going to show you something. I just hand on you. I love you. <laughs> it's an inside for you and your mother, the apostle. <laughs> is what we've been going through. God is real. So I thank you. Listen, y'all know 15 to 20 minutes. I feel a prayer that has to happen. So I'm going to, but the Lord is getting ready to, getting ready to do something. I'm talking announcements. And please, 
You can leave, just leave quietly. Service starts. These next part is getting ready to do. We've been expecting me to be quiet. Let's pray. So I dismiss you all. We thank you. I'm, a, I'm not a visit. God bless you. But can we pray? It's being bent toward the prayer. I said, grab yourself a spot. Brothers, please make sure that the, 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 we take care outside like